Most of us just had an ordinary night on February 4th, 2012. But for one man, it was life-changing. The rise of Lynn's sanity thrust Jeremy Lynn into the limelight and made us believe that underdogs can make it big in the NBA. Today we'll be taking an inside look at what some players and coaches around the league think about Lynn's sanity, as well as their comments about the game of Jeremy Lynn in the latter part of his career. Just a quick backstory of all this. After losing 11 out of 13 games and with injuries on his roster piling up, New York coach Mike D'Antoni looked desperate and seemed to throw the white flag by inserting the guy who sat at the far end of the bench named Jeremy Lin. Jeremy Lin, and you're a pretty big ovation. We saw last night. Little did D'Antoni know that his last attempt for survival would actually spark a turnaround for the struggling franchise that would eventually snowball into a global phenomenon that no one saw coming. On the night of February 4th, 2012, against the Nets, Jeremy Lin stunned Madison Square Garden by finishing with 25 points, 7 assists, and 4 rebounds to a 99-92 win, officially igniting the birth of Lin Sanity. D'Antoni talked in an interview about Jeremy's never-say-die attitude as well as his unwavering persistence in achieving his NBA dream. Lynn has had to fight. No one's really taken him to be as good as he was. He was a great player in high school in California and nobody wanted him. He was a great player at Harvard. Nobody wanted him. He was a great player with the Knicks and even then they still struggled to believe. He's had to battle for everything that he has and it's a great story. He's fun to coach, a good guy. You root for people like that. That'll be one of your favorite stories forever. 60 years playing ball or doing whatever, and that's one of the best. Went through Linsanity together, and that was fun. He helped me as a coach without a doubt. We were dead in the water. It was a strike year. Our point guards were hurt. We didn't really have point guards. It was a great story. When you live for that moment, you get close. And he's a good guy. His family's nice, so that'll be something I'll always remember, and hopefully I'll always be close to him. After racking up three straight wins and successive big games coming from Lynn, the Knicks were set for a big-time matchup against Kobe Bryant and the rest of the Lakers at home. When reporters asked Kobe if he had heard about Lynn's sanity or news about Jeremy Lynn, Kobe just shrugged it off and had this to say, What? No idea. I know who he is, but I don't really know what's going on with them. I don't even know what he's done. Like, I have no idea what you guys are talking about. I'll take a look at the tape tonight, though. I really have no idea if Jeremy heard what Kobe Bryant said before their game, but let's just say that Jeremy was a bit mad leading up to their matchup. Jeremy Lin formally introduced himself to Kobe and the Lakers by dropping a career high of 38 points, including 7 assists, 4 rebounds, and 2 steals to carry the Knicks to their fourth straight victory under the Lin Sanity era. Lin on the drive, gets inside, banks it in! How about that? How about that? He did not... Kobe seemed to finally acknowledge Jeremy with a kind of impressive performance and had this to say in the post-game interview. I think it's a great story. I think it's a testament to perseverance and hard work. Good example for kids everywhere. Players playing that well don't usually come out of nowhere. It seems like they come out of nowhere, but if you go back and take a look, his skill level was probably there from the beginning. It probably just went unnoticed. Though almost everyone in the NBA sphere and people around the world was happy about Jeremy Lin's unexpected rise to stardom, there are some that were not, particularly several players from the Knicks roster. His former teammate, Amari Stoudemire, spilled the beans in an interview saying that the majority of players from the Knicks locker room didn't like Lin and the amazing run of insanity in NYC, and he also hinted that this could be the biggest reason for his departure to Houston at the end of the 2012 season. Everyone wasn't a fan of Lynn being the new star, so he didn't stay long. But Jeremy was a great, great guy, great teammate. He worked hard. He put the work in and we're proud of him to have his moment. A lot of times you gotta enjoy someone's success, and that wasn't the case for us during that stretch. You gotta enjoy that. You have to let the player enjoy himself and cherish those moments. He was becoming a star, and I don't think everybody was pleased with that. Before Lynn Sanity took over New York City, the Knicks had always been Carmelo Anthony's team, and some say that this started the rift between the franchise star and the unexpected star. But Melo quickly turned down the rumors surrounding this speculation when he reacted upon Jeremy's huge signing to the Nets in 2016. 
He is the face of their franchise, believe it or not. He came up, they paid him. Now the ball is in his hands. Now he's one of the franchise players over there. I don't know what you want me to say about that. I'm happy for him, excited for him to see how it's going to turn out over there. I've never had any personal issues with him. We've never gotten into a fight or argument or anything in person or through text or anything. I've never had anything remotely hostile with him. So whatever he says, I don't know. You guys can ask him. In terms of my personal interaction with him, we've never bumped heads or anything. After the rise and fall of Lynn's sanity over at New York, Lynn turned a new leaf as the starting point guard of the Houston Rockets, playing alongside the potent backcourt frontcourt duo of James Harden and Dwight Howard. Jeremy on the drive. Jeremy gets it inside, lays it up. During his two year stay with the Rockets, Lynn averaged 13 points, 5.2 assists, 1.3 steals over the course of 153 games. Contrary to Melo and Amari, Harden and Howard had nothing but praises when he got traded to Los Angeles. James Harden had this to say, Jeremy has been through so much thus far in his career, so much criticism. It seems like every single year it's something different with Jeremy, but he's battled through it tough like a warrior. I give him credit. Whatever team he's on, he's focused on playing his role to the best of his abilities. There's no difference this year. Dwight Howard had this to say, Jeremy is a strong guy. He'll be able to overcome any situation. He played well for us. I'm sure he's going to give LA everything they want. After having a decent run in Houston, Lynn struggled for the most part as a member of the Lakers because his pick and roll play style didn't match the offensive philosophy installed by then Laker coach Byron Scott, who favored the Princeton offense, which relies heavily on people and ball movement. The Lakers had a horrible season with a 21-61 win-loss record while Jeremy was on and off in the starting lineup, and on a sad note, he missed the last five games of the season due to an upper respiratory infection. Despite their on-court differences, Byron Scott had some good words to say to Jeremy during the postseason evaluation about his game and performance. I think he's obviously gotten better. I think when he first got here, his mind of what a point guard is was totally different than mine. And as we went along, he started to understand what I wanted from him on a day-to-day -day basis. So I thought the progression was much better. I thought he got a lot of mentality as the season went on. And I think a lot of that comes from just understanding what the coach wants. And so, like I said, at the end of the day, I saw a big time growth from him. The one thing about him, the kid takes criticism. You can jump on him about things and he takes it with a grain of salt and tries to get better. That's the one thing I do love about him. He doesn't pout about it. Just go out there and tries to implement things that you give him and try to become a better basketball player. Moving on from his tough stop at LA, Lynn found himself to be on the move once again, but this time he signed a two-year, $4.3 million contract to become a Charlotte Hornet. He played off the bench around this time, but sometimes found himself playing alongside Kemba Walker in the backcourt. During the one season he played for the Hornets, the former coach of the team, Steve Clifford, talked about how underrated of a defender he is. While Kemba believes that Lynn still hasn't lost his star ability and declared that he deserves a starting role for the next team that he's going to play in. He's a much, much better defender than people realize. He competes hard every night, and he's a very serious player. I hate to see him go, but at the same time, I'm definitely happy for him. He deserves to be a starter in this league. He's such a great player, and he proved that last season. There were games where I was off, and he carried the team. After briefly reuniting with former Nick assistant coach Kenny Atkinson in Brooklyn and reliving the good old days of the Lynn Sanity era, he was traded once again to the Hawks to serve as a mentor to Trey Young. But Jeremy proved to be more than just a veteran mentor as he provided solid minutes off the bench by averaging 10.7 points while dishing out 3.5 assists. Lloyd Pierce had some good words to say about Jeremy's overall game as well as the impact that he generates whenever he inserts himself into the game. I call him the stabilizer. He's been a guy that coming off the bench, his experience, you know what you're going to get from him, especially in a pick and roll. Whether we're up or down, what he does is he just comes in and just impacts the game immediately, just staying within himself. Dang, I wish Jeremy was still in the league today. I know he can still ball and he's not old at all. I mean, he's the same age as Stephen Curry. And speaking of Steph, ever wonder what the daily life of an MVP is? If you're curious, here's the video right here, where I go over Curry's daily routines and training regimen on what it takes to be the best of the best. 
click the video, guys. Watch it. Enjoy it. And like always, I'll see you on the other side.